Alexis let me in. Oh, he's looking like a blooming zombie. What's the matter with him? Germinal exhaustion. Or so he claims. Poor bloke. So, I got your message. What do you want to see me about? I sent that message a couple of days ago. Was it that long? Sorry, I've been quite busy. Like everyone else. Must be a busy time of the year. Hmm. All right, then. You remember we had a chat about you finding extra star for us here, some pals of yours? Yeah, I thought you'd gone off the idea. Well, I might have given that impression, but it was only because of the general confusion of the last few weeks. And now you're willing to trust me again, are you? I want to, Rob. And that's not only because the situation's getting a bit desperate. Desperate? What's happening? Alexis coming out on strike? How did you know that? I didn't. It was a joke. Oh. Well, it's what the so-and-so's threatening, as it happens. I've tried to treat it as a joke, but I'm beginning to think he means it. Well, you do have him working a lot of hours, and his leg's a bit weak still. Yeah, I know. So, can you find someone for me? Okay, I'll have a word with Vincent Carroll over the weekend. I know they could do with the cash. Ah, good lad. Um... You wouldn't like to do me a favour in return, would you? What's that? Well, they're having a housewarming party at our place tonight, and I've got a feeling Peter Tyson's turning up, because his dad lives there. After that encounter I had with him the other day, I reckon I could do with some moral support. <laughs> That's a backhanded invitation, if ever I heard one. Will you come, though? Yeah, of course I will. Mind you, given the relations between the Prowse and the Tysons, I'll need your moral support as well. Right, it's a deal. Sophie and I are working a shift system, so we're not both away from the restaurant at the same time. So she'll be at the party for the first bit. Well, in that case, I'll pick you up from work in the car. That way we can arrive in force. Oh, dear. Will you be much longer, uh, Miss uh, Richmond? Sorry? I said we'll... Oh, that's better. I was asking if you would be much longer. No, Mr. Tyson, I've finished. Did I disturb you? The noise does penetrate. Oh. But it wasn't that. I was wanting to make my way through to the kitchen. George did promise to adapt the old airing cover to make a kitchenette for me. But he still hasn't got round to it. Oh, well, I don't suppose he's had time. It's only a couple of weeks since you both moved in. I am aware of that. But it's a matter of priorities. As far as I can see, oh. George has become obsessed with the fripperies of life. This party, for instance. Mm -hmm. I consider the whole prospect a total nightmare. Don't you like parties? A civilised dinner party is acceptable, but when it comes to a wholesale invasion of one's privacy... Oh, I'm sure people won't be going up to your room, Mr Tyson. Oh, won't they? And what, pray, is there to stop them? Um, well, you could lock the door. And become a prisoner in my own home. Ah, but you won't be inside the room. You'll be down here with the rest of us, enjoying yourself. That is a matter of speculation. <sighs> Who knows what goings on there might be. I might be forced to absent myself... In order to save my reputation. Good heavens. Do you think Mr. Underdown is planning an orgy? No, I do not, young lady. Oh. But given the presence of several members of your generation, the event could quite possibly pass beyond George's control. In fact, I think I had better make a telephone call before I make myself coffee. Excuse me. Hmm. I suppose he's going to tip off the vice squad in advance. Dear. Uh, Peter Tyson. Oh, hello, Peter. I want to talk to you. Oh, Father. But you're going to be seeing me this evening. Though I ought to warn you, Father, Les won't be able to come. Uh, we can't get a babysitter at such short notice. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. She might have been a stabilizing influence. Listen, Peter. If this party of George's becomes too riotous, I shall want to come back with you to Minden Road. But, Father... No, I insist, Peter. I know there isn't a spare bed... But I shall be willing to sleep on the sofa. Here you are, Deacon. One half of lager. Oh, thanks a lot. Cheers, Morris. Cheers. Oh, you usually have a pint in a Friday, don't you? Yes, I know. But I expect I'll be drinking a fair bit tonight. Ah, yes. Hey, I've been invited to that do by Shudley. Good. Should be fun. Uh, I'm a bit nervous about it. Be the first time Trudy's met any of my friends. Aha! Uh -huh. This famous singer of yours is putting in an appearance, is she? I hope so. We're meeting tonight anyway, and nothing else was fixed up. Mm -hmm. Does that mean Junior Spellgrove will be waiting out in the street to see who else turns up? Heaven forbid! Hey, <laughs> uh, uh, there's something I'd like to ask you. Will Cressida be there tonight? No. Oh. I thought you might have asked her. I did. 
But she's got other plans. Oh, well, uh, that's all right, then. I thought it would be better if her paths didn't cross. What's she up to instead? She's seeing Simon. Perhaps you shouldn't have asked. Well, I might as well know. Us newspaper men have to get hold of the facts, don't we? (sighs) We're in here, George. We? Good Lord. (laughs) (laughs) It's the Ladies' Committee of G Underdown Entertainment Limited. Hello, Shirley, Sophie and Jessie. Hello, George. I thought I'd risk popping across to see if you needed an iron getting things ready, but it looks as though you're doing all right for yourself. Well, I'm sure we can... (laughs) Find something for me to do? (laughs) Very nice to see you again, oh, anyway. Thanks. That's made my day. Yeah. I gave the place an extra thorough clean this morning. Oh, thank you, Sophie. <laughs> yes, the place looks absolutely spotless. Oh, great. <laughs> Seems a pity when one thinks of the cigarette ash and the peanuts. So, if you can give us an idea of what you want done with the furniture, we can get cracking. Righto. Um, <laughs> do you know my mind's gone blank? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Look, I tell you what, how about having the big table over there against the window, and then if she feels like it, Jessie can start laying out the food. Oh, I'm ready and willing. Yeah, and here's a paper tablecloth. I think you ladies might as well take complete charge. I'll just do what I'm told. In that case, George, hmm? would you like to answer the door? Oh, right away. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Underdown. Mrs. Tandy. Yes. Uh, I thought you might need some help in preparing for this evening. Hey, Morris. What's that? Where are you sneaking off to? Oh, I was uh, looking for somewhere to kill some time in. Oh, I mean in the pub, no doubt. Well, seemed the most likely place. Look, this is a highly respectable social event you are coming to, you know. I am sure it is. Which means we don't want you getting tanked up before you arrive. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do instead? Go home and put on my suit? No, but you can give me a hand with the booze. Ah, now you're talking. Yeah, but I'm talking about carrying it, not drinking it. Ah. Follow me. Where are we getting it from? The wagoners. Well, I had to order it from Donald Fitzroy. Keep him sweet about me and Jessie having the night off. Oh, uh, she's the woman Shirley was teasing you about when I had supper with you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, there's nothing between us, though. More's the pity. <laughs> He's a very nice piece of stuff. All right, well, when do I get to meet her, then? Yeah, as soon as we get back to the house. How do I look? Hmm? Uh, quite stunning. Ravishing. Even just plain okay. <laughs> Sorry, Sophie. Is that a new dress? Oh, God, you noticed. It's very nice. Oh. Well, I couldn't really afford it, of course. But the party gave me the excuse I needed. <laughs> it's a very slender excuse, mind you, but um, I won't be there very long. Why not? Well, I have to go off to the restaurant so that Rob can appear magically in my place. Well, I'll walk you there when the time comes. Oh, don't be daft. You, you just stay here and enjoy yourself. Well. Huh. What's the matter, Dickon? Nothing. Ah, oh, now, come on. You can tell me, can't you? Let me give you a cover. <laughs> you look like little boy lost. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I've been an idiot, that's all. I had a firm arrangement to see Trudy tonight. Oh. Of course, I was going to ask her to come here. Oh, a pop singer amongst us lot. I thought she might have enjoyed a change from her usual crowd. But she didn't fancy it. I didn't get the chance to find out. When I rang up to tell her about it, some man answered the phone. Told me she was busy and to try again next year. It could have been anyone answering. Maybe maybe she didn't even know he was doing it. I doubt it. She's messed me about before. Oh, never mind, love. You'll find someone else. Wish it could be someone like you, Sophie. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry about that time in the no, cinema. No, no, but... Dickon. Look, you know, you know there's a limit to, to how involved I can get. Well, at least we could look after one another when things are going badly. I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into, but, um, oh, well, perhaps we could. <laughs> At least you've broken down one barrier for me. Hmm? Tonight is the first time I've willingly touched a man since I was a child. <laughs> George, I hope you don't expect me to dance to that. <laughs> it's nearly finished, oh, Arthur. Good. <laughs> And how are you, Mr. Dyson? Oh, bearing up, dear lady, under the strain. Oh, dear. Uh, what, what, what's going wrong? 
My catering arrangements. Yeah, aren't you getting enough to eat? Barely. Oh. I don't have a kitchen of my own, you know. George says one will be installed, but when... Yes, well, he was sitting. He'd been something hard for you. Oh, I... good heavens. My son has arrived. Oh, will you excuse me? Yes, I must have a word with him. Of course. Peter. Ah, hello, Father. Uh, uh, apropos of my telephone mm-hmm. call, I think I may have misjudged the nature of the proceedings in hand. Oh, I'm really fed up, Morris. You know, nobody's asked me for a Harvey Wallbanger all evening. Honestly, you too. <laughs> What's the matter, sir? Yeah, well, Morris, hanging over the drink table. Oh, I'll make sure no one has too much. Yeah, Check yourself. Yeah, I know. How about circulating, eh? Circulating? Yes. And you can circulate some drinks, too, while you're at it. Oh. People seem to be enjoying themselves, Jessie. Oh, yes. Me in particular. Oh, I'm glad. Nearly everyone seems to have arrived. I don't see Sophie or Dickens. Oh, they were here, but she had to go off to work. Ah. And he's walking her there. Mm. Oh, they make a nice couple. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I know for a fact Dickon has interests elsewhere. <laughs> They're only good friends. <laughs> like us. Yes. Hello, Morris. Haven't seen you since, uh, Cressa and I came to dinner at your house. <laughs> Lots of water under the bridge since then. Yes. Things all right at the paper, are they? Well, what does your missus say? Oh, I think she's pretty optimistic. Oh, well. Now then, can I fill your glass for you? I'm the acting unpaid barman. Oh, uh, thank you. Shirley uh, and Cliff. Oh, hello, George. I'd like to tell you, I've decided we might as well scrap the idea of the outside basement door. Yeah? Yes. Should the time come when you want to sell, we'll have to make alterations in the main hall up here. Well, are you sure? Yes. That's how it's done in a lot of the other houses around here, you know. But the uh, the agreement stands. Oh, it certainly does. Oh, fantastic, George. George, you're a smasher. Come here. Oh. you oh. <laughs> Have you been away, Mrs. Brewer? How do you mean, Mr. Tyson? You don't seem to have crossed our threshold for, for, for a few days. I decided you all deserved a rest oh, from me. I discovered are. George can fend for himself pretty well. Apparently, he's a very good cook, yeah, so I won't be bringing any more meals across. Oh, I see. As yet, I have no separate cooking facilities of my own, you know. Haven't you? Uh, just our luck, Rob. What's that? Oh, let's kill Here we are, two thirsty yeah. men and Pete Tyson Esquire's hovering bang in front of the drinks table. Shall we brave it then? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Uh, uh, excuse me, Lou. Uh, 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 poor old Tully. Uh-huh. He's standing there with his Hello, phone Peter. Down. Absolutely. Oh, hello, Matt. Any chance of me and my young friend getting through to the uh, wine, eh? Yes, yes, of course. Red or white? Red, please. Uh, okay. White for me. <laughs> so, how's tricks? Oh, oh fine. Though I, uh, I could do with a little less of the moral pressure. Oh, is that what you call it? Well, apologies for any upsets caused. Cheers. Cheers. As far as we're concerned, everything's back to the old arrangement, you'll be glad to hear. Till it gets sorted out once and for all. Oh, well, that suits me. So, I'll be over on Sunday to fetch Jeremy for lunch with us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 